Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spears and Steinberg Podcast. Right here with Spears. How y'all feel out there? Spears. What time is it? Game time. $10. A lot of old Steve. Biatch. $10. A lot of old Steve. That was great, Mook. That was, you know, you got it. You understood what the old Steves are. I remember a couple other people tried to send us some old Steves, and they really didn't understand the essence of what old Steves were. But you fucking got it, Mookie. That's because he's so appreciate that, brother. That's because he's a dad. But he got it even before being a dad. Yeah, but you know, I was just giving him an extra shout out for becoming a dad. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't understand the connection, but I got you. You know, I'm just, you know, he he takes his time out to listen to our podcast, understand what you're asking for, at the same time fucking his girl and having a kid. He came up with that while fucking his girl. And having a kid. It's a lot of work. Baby, give me Mookie the pussy. All right. First one. This is from Thomas Savaglio. Sounds Italian. Savaglio. Bert, dear Bert Bridgewater, seeing as how the holiday is approaching, I was wondering if you could give us all a little bit of an insight on what a real man's Christmas is. Also, could you please have a talk with your homie, Bathtub Koshi? I think he could benefit from a manly one on one. Uh, despite my wife still being salty at you for telling me to Dutch oven her, she brought up a good idea. You should do TikToks of all these skits, characters, and scenarios you come up with on the pod. We could definitely use more animations too. And could you ask Steve to make an index or bullet points we could access on your website or somewhere with a breakdown on what happens on each episode so all the insights could be found easily? Instead of having to listen through hours of episodes to find that one part we want to go back to, anyways, happy holidays. Is that something we could facilitate? I mean, it would take hours. We could do it. We could also go to his house and cut his steak for him and feed him. That's hilarious. That's white sarcasm. <laughs> you know what? I tell you, here's what you do, Thomas. Um, why don't you put together a list? And if fans want to put together a list of their favorite moments, because I watch a lot of game tape. I will probably be able to go back and figure out where you're at. I, I won't know all of them, uh, but but if you come up with, hey, I like when you said this, or I like this moment, I probably could 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 uh, pinpoint what that is for you. But we so deep now that, like Andy said, it'd be a little tough to do that because there's just so much shit we would have to go through. I think we should try to find origins, though, like origins of like the first first time Burt Bridgewater first time uh, and, yeah i wouldn't even okay yeah okay you know so at least you, you at least you could go back and go okay i'm gonna grab it from here listen to the right. entrance okay well let me g g satisfy his request and and bring my man bird out real quick um burt bridgewater here to explain what a real man is the christmas version when it's time to go looking for a tree a real man doesn't buy a tree from the tree lot a real man goes into the forest all by himself, finds the biggest, baddest tree there is, then gets on all fours and puts his mouth to the bottom base of the tree and gnaws at it until it eventually snaps loose. Then that man goes and kidnaps 15 homosexual men from a rave party and stuffs them into the tree. So when it's night, all their glitter bright eccentric clothes, loud colors and hot homosexual energy and gay juice lights up the entire house. A real man in an effort to break the ice walks around the company Christmas party with a ball peen hammer in his hand. And when he walks up to every guy he sees, he asks, what do you get when a ball peen hammer crosses paths with testicles? And when the fellow man asks, what's that? That's when the real man smashes the other guy's balls with the ball peen hammer and says a nutcracker. Merry Christmas, motherfucker. 
This presentation has been brought to you by Bridge Burtwater, a real man. And then I make my way over to Colch's house, busting his bathroom. And when I see him laying in the tub butt naked with nothing on but socks up to his knees with the toes in them and different colored patterns, that's when I take the fucking hairdryer, throw it in the tub, and I say, man the fuck up and jump in the shower, you Indian son of a bitch. All right. Happy holidays. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that our audience is growing and leaving yeah. at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, this is from King Holmes. Yo, what up, ANA? Long time listener since day one, but first time emailing you guys. Aries, first of all, the Bulls cannot beat the Warriors with KD in a seven game series. With the way the game is played and the three point shot being so crucial to the game along the way, along with the way the teams move the ball, Jordan may get them one or two games, but that's it. <clears throat> Let me stop you real quick. I don't want to go on a long tangent about this because you know how passionate I am. But Ask yourself these questions. The 72 and 10 Bulls versus that KD Warriors team. First of all, they had four out of five elite defenders as their starting five. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and Ron Harper. Would Ron Harper shut down Klay Thompson? Klay Thompson's too good. I mean, not Klay, Steph Curry. Steph Curry's going to be Steph Curry. But Ron Harper was a very good defender who may get help defense from Michael Jordan. Who's shutting down Michael Jordan? Klay Thompson? Come on, man. Let's get serious. Kevin Durant's going to be Kevin Durant, but Pippen is going to make it a hard day at the office for him. Dennis Rodman is going to guard Draymond Green. He's going to get so far up Draymond Green's head and ass, he will take him out of position. And remember, when Dennis Rodman guarded Shaq, in the 96 run, when the Bulls swept him after Jordan came back, not the year he came back from baseball, but the following year when he got his ba ba basketball legs back because he had baseball legs and they swept the magic. Dennis Rodman guarded Shaq a lot and was a problem for Shaq. So what the fuck you think he's going to do to Draymond Green? They had two seven footers who could shoot from the perimeter, Bill Winnington and Luke Longley, which opens up the lanes for who? Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Steve Kerr wouldn't be the coach because he's obviously would be on the team. Steve Kerr and Judd Butchler, two three-point assassins. So when you double down on Mike or Scottie, you leave those guys open. And Phil Jackson would obviously be the coach, which means who would be the coach for Golden State? Does it really fucking matter? It's Phil fucking Jackson, the babe roof of coaches. Do we really need to have this discussion? All right, let me carry on. Um, Eddie Murphy uh, ba, 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 Jordan make it, ba, 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 ba. Eddie Murphy top five should be Life, Beverly Hills Cop Coming to America, Boomerang and Harlem Nights As a matter of fact, Harlem Nights is one of the funniest movies ever Made with damn near every comedy legend in the film Now this is his second point, let me address this Are you out of your fucking mind? You're putting Life above Beverly Hills Cop 2? Other than the scene with Della Reese where him and uh, him, her and Eddie had the fight and he shot a pinky toe off and the scene with uh, Layla Rashawn with Richie when he called his family up and went, yeah, put mommy on the phone. Yeah, I ain't coming home no more. Take care because her pussy was so good. If she threw it in the air, turn up the sunshine. Other than those two moments, what in the movie uh, Harlem Nights stands out comedically? What jumps out at you? You know how many quotables are in Beverly Hills Cop 2? When Eddie Murphy shows up, I'm a busy man. I make moves. Snap on my fingers. I'm about business. Don't hand me fucked up because you sitting around fucking with the titty woman over here. Then the second time, I know there's pork in the room. I used to be a Muslim. Yes, yes, that, 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 that definitely pork to the fucking, I got two daughters, Monique and Unique. That's $5. That's $10 a shoe. It, oh, 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 you almost got fucked up. There's so many moments. And Beverly Hills Cop 2. How do you put Harlem Knights above Beverly Hills Cop 2? You're out of your fucking mind. Uh, Harlem, last point. Harlem Knights was made because it could be made. Yes. Not because it needed to be made. Because it, it could be made. He was able to put everybody in that movie. That was the best part of the movie is that everybody was in the movie. 
And to Andy's point, the crazy part is you got three comedic legends slash icons slash giants, Pryor, Fox, and Murphy. And that movie was only that funny? That movie was supposed to be fit. That movie was supposed to be one of the funniest movies in movie history. And it was far from that. It and just, you talking about three giants. It got made just to have everybody in that movie. That was a fun movie for everybody to come hang out and do. It wasn't a great movie. No, no. His last point, Paid in Full is one of the best, if not the best, hood movie of all time. That film has way too many quotables in it from start to finish. Lastly, I think it would be dope if you had a phone line where we could call in with questions and comments for the email podcast to chat with you guys. All right, I'm out, King. I think that I would like be cool. F- yeah, that would be. That's actually been something Mandy and I have been throwing around for a while now. Um, dude, Paid in Full is good. But come on. The greatest hood movie of all time is New Jack City. There's paid in full. Stop. It was cool. But New Jack City is the Don Dada. There's probably a couple more I could throw in there over paid in full. But I would even say boys in the hood. I'd put juice ahead of paid in full. Maybe even New Jersey Drive. Nah, son. I can't give you that. It was good, but there's a lot of movies. You think it's, be- you think it's better than New Jack City? No, man. You know, he- here's the thing. Here. I- I- I've been taking a lot of time to do a lot of thinking, and I think this goes for a lot of things in life in the world. There's a lot of great. There's not. Wait, let me rephrase it. There's a lot of amazing. Number one, there's a lot of trash, but most everything's in the middle. Right. Most everything is in the middle. So the the few that you named, those I I mean I I would put them up there. Paid in full. It's in the middle. It's not that it's not good. Right. It's just that there's so much good shit anyway. It's right there in the middle. Does it stand up above the rest? That's the question. How much There's shit- so much gooder shit out there. Well, when you even say good, just the best stuff comes to the top. You see the best stuff. Like in, ba- you know, in basketball, let, let's just take basketball because we were talking about basketball for a second. There's 10 outstanding players in the league. 10 outstanding players. Now, there, there's also really good players in the league. Really good players. All those guys are better than everybody on, not better than everybody on the street, but most street players. They're the, ba- they're the next best, but there's still just a batch of good players. There's only few that you could call the greatest, the great ones. Same with the movies that you're talking about. I, I, I don't think that it fits in there. I think it's a good movie. I think it's one of the better movies, but I don't think that it goes above the other ones that are in there. Right. And, you know, often when I, you know, get into debates, which I think is one of the most moistest, corniest things people can say, because, again, debates are about tribalism. And when, again, whether it's sports or especially sports, or man food movies or whatever. Debates are tribalism. And, and tribalism is part of machismo. It's part of manhood. You know, we debate, nigga. It happens in barbershops, dice games, house parties. It's what we do. So when I hear guys going, man, it's all subjective. So what does it matter? Man, get your motherfucking tampon ass in the kitchen with the rest of the bitches and finish, finish making that goddamn apple cum cake. The fuck are you doing? But at the same time, men. <laughs> but, at what that, we do. but at that same time, what I'm saying is people get all offended when you say when you say to them, no, I don't agree with you. That didn't mean you said the movie sucked. That doesn't mean when you say Jordan's the best, doesn't mean LeBron sucks. It, no. It just And again, yes. It is subjective, but I'm right, though. <laughs> but in your head, you have to be right. What are you going to say? You're going to say the wrong shit out of your own head? Nah, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm right, though. I know what I'm talking about. I, I just think it's funny that people can't have a difference of opinion. And like you just said, we debate. We argue. That's part of the fun. That used to be the fun of the conversation. You know what I mean? Now it's like, oh. Like, a lot of dudes is taken straight up. You know what I mean? That time of the month rolls. That time of the month positions. Oh, man. This is all subjective. This is why it's pointless. That's vaginal. You're saying shit women say. 
Oh, now, now, boys. It's all subjective. So what does it matter? Get your motherfucking ass. If you don't, bitch, if you don't put your apron back on and get that rolling pin and get to work. Say what Fuck you out of here as a man, you saying that. Say what you say, stand on it. That doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with you. And I know there's some women that, you know, will sit at the men's table and pull that pistol and shoot a motherfucker. You want me to shoot this nigga Big Daddy? Big shout out to Shamar. I know we got some, some broads out there that'll Regina King that shit the harder they fall. But for the most part, come on, man. Cookie dough ass on your fingertip, niggas. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Seven Outcasts. Brain farts and an ass whooping. Ayo, I like this. He goes, Ayo, Aristotle and Grand Theft Auto Andy. <laughs> I like the Aristotle. I like it. Nice. Yeah. Um, he's very opinionated about you on something, Andy. So I don't know if you'll still like him, but yeah, here I, we go. I could care less. Go okay, ahead. You care a little bit. Just a little bit. Not really. All right. Aries in your Jay-Z voice. It's your boy, Sean. This is my second time emailing the podcast. Let me start off by saying I enjoy the hell out of y'all's podcast and often listen to it while unwinding. But in saying that, there are times when I listen to you two motherfuckers trying to recall simple shit and listen to you both struggle at times. <laughs> I get so fucking stressed out. I can, I got a stain on my shirt. And it's mustard. Um, I get so fucking stressed out. I feel my blood pressure shoot up to almost stroke status from yelling the answers into my phone. Like when Andy struggled to and never did end up recalling, by the way, the plane Hamilton. And then the brain fart passes to you, Aries, and you couldn't recall it either. And your condition only worsened, Aries, when you couldn't remember your own email address. Like, what the fuck, you guys? <laughs> Please do whatever you got to do and put out an SOS to get a company that deals in ginkgo biloba, which I bought some. Um, I'm not sure that that works. But anyway, <laughs> um, to sponsor your show and save your beautiful minds. Second thing I wanted to hit on, Aries, you say there is no bitch that could kick your ass, but I think I came up with one that could whoop yours and GTA, GTA, Andy, GTA Andy's as simultaneously, it would be none other than the female UFC fighter, Amanda Nunez. Yo, let me just stop real reading real quick. You might be right, because there's a point where you look at certain women and you go, nah, that's not a woman, son. <laughs> there's some there's some genetic shit going on. Yo, her face and her jawline is very, uh, and I, I might have used this reference before. But one of my favorite action man food movies, Tango and Cash. The dude with the jaw. He puts fucking Jay Leno to shame. Michelle Nunez, or what's her name? Was it Michelle? Amanda. She just got a very like, I piece standing up. What's up? She makes me nervous, dude. I think she would have mopped the floor with uh, old girl. That was the, the the baddest bitch at one point. Was the only one in the sport. Remember her name? Uh, you know the white chick. Yeah, Andy. I, been in entourage. You don't know her I don't name? remember her name though. Oh man, now this is gonna fuck with me. Can your phone? Can you? Um, UFC? I'm on it. I'm Y'all on know it. who I'm talking about. R- Ronda Rousey. There you go. Ronda Rousey. Anyway, let me continue. Uh, this broad is B A D. She would knock Andy out in mere seconds, and because Aries. And because you've been so adamant about never getting beat up by a bitch, she would go on to humiliate and rob you of your man card, kicking each of your legs repeatedly until there was temporarily rendered unusable, unusable, then get in a rear neck chokehold and put your ass to sleep as you make a failed to attempt to tap out. Uh, I want to close out by saying <clears throat> I like the new podcast opening, but do miss the Andy up hype infused intro and Andy, you need to get some memorable moments in there besides just laughing at Aries, my guy. It's called the Spearsburg podcast, but only features Aries classic lines and you giggling here and there in the background. Shit, even some of the regular listeners got more run into the intro than you did. Not insulting you, Andy or saying that Aries is stealing the spotlight. 
let the new or usual ca- or casual let the new or casual listener know you a beast too. Your boy out. You doing any or just me on this one? I I think I've addressed everything that he said. The memory shit is contagious. It's like laughter. You know, motherfuckers start laughing. You start chuckling even though you're going, what the fuck am I laughing about? Sometimes when he has a brain freeze, my brain lock up too. Maybe it's Amanda Nunez in my head putting my brain in a chokehold. <laughs> well, first of all, let's just stick with this, uh, with the MMA fighters. I know you say you don't think and you just said her, maybe her. Dude, these, these, I don't care if it's a dude or a chick. These are skilled people. You're gonna I make a, you're gonna make a move, and they have a counter move to put you on the ground and put you out. That's the bottom line. You're not trained. I don't care if it's a chick or if it's a dude. If they're trained and you're not, you're hitting the canvas, dude. I don't know. I don't know. I believe there is a male instinct gene that will take over. And just go, nah, yo, it ain't happening. It's a female. Yeah, you could. That's what you're thinking while you're sleeping on the canvas. <laughs> this isn't happening, <laughs> <laughs> nigga. I will hit that bitch with whatever I can pick up first. If you if you get lucky, yeah, but they're trained so that you can't hit them. I I, I seen these MMA <laughs> I, dude. I seen guys that I would never think are tough tough dudes, and I'm saying dudes right now because I have some people that I know that do this. Dude, that, it's not normal. It's not normal to be, to, to, you know what to do. I, I couldn't do it. I'm not trained to do that. that I'd get my ass handed to me by a chick that knows what she's doing. I don't give a fuck. I'll say it because that's the truth. 100. There is no way. I disarm her because once she's grabbed me, I start sucking on a titty <laughs> and disarm her and make her grip get weak. You know what I mean? And then she, she won't be as strong. Okay, so... If that's what how you win, that's how you win. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm, you might get some titty, but that's it. You'll be thinking about it while man. your light's out. Uh, the second part. Yeah, man, I, sh- I could say more. Uh, and we've done this before, but I do what I do. And I make this podcast move. And you just said something that's, that I love. You talked about me. You said, I'm yelling at the phone because you're not remembering your shit. I'm more in your head and you don't even know that I'm in your head, dude. So you live in rent free? Live in rent free. Damn. So you ain't paying nothing. You in his head. He's, ye- he's yelling while he's walking down the street at me. There's no way he could live in your head because ain't no way a Jew going to let somebody live rent free. I'm not even going to remember if he got in there. Uh-uh. <laughs> there it is. <sighs> What's next? Is that it? That's it. All right. Um, DeAndrea Turner. Uh, what up, ANA? Here's a list of man food movies to watch on Netflix. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. And as I name these out, Andy, tell me if you heard of any of these, because I hadn't. Um, Extreme. No, I haven't heard. Polar. Nope. The King. That one I heard of, but I don't even know what it is. The Platform. Nope. Shot Caller. No. The platform. No. The hard way. The hard way. That one sounds familiar. Uh, Lost bullet. Nope. Mm, Message from the king. No. The outsider. The outsider, I know. Uh, Last days of American crime. I don't think I know that one. Blood and bone. Blood and Bone, I saw like a preview for it. I haven't seen it. Uh, Six Underground. Nope. Last one, uh, Aries Big Black Cock. Uh, that's, a, that, that's a cartoon, right? That's funny. <laughs> See what he did there to the last person who I can't remember because the Ginkle Biloba just got knocked out by Amanda Nunez. Yeah, uh, the hard way. No, I haven't seen that one either, dude. Where did she? This is. Was it a she or a he that just sent you these these man movies? Deandra, Deandra. Okay. I gotta assume a she. Uh, man, I want to look up these movies because I haven't even heard of them. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. Well, you know, here's what worries me. I'm gonna keep this list, but this was all given to us by a female. 
Not saying that a woman can't recognize a man movie, but I don't know if a woman could recognize a man movie more than a man could recognize a man movie. Uh, none of these movies got scenes where dudes are crying, right? Or hugging. Well, the King, uh, the King is another one of those, uh, uh, English throne, you know, oh, period knights, pieces, knights. Yeah. Knights, horses. <laughs> right. So I don't know about that one. Uh, I, man, there's a lot, dude, there's so many movies right now because we have so many people making movies that we don't know about because they're not being promoted in the Hollywood way that we're used to getting our movies. And, and then you wonder how many of those movies are really worth it. Well, oh, and then, and then movies are competing with series. I mean, you get a series, you're going to watch you that that's on the list every week. <clears throat> I know you're not going to watch it, and I'm I'm 99.9% sure I'm not going to watch it. But you know that little bit of curiosity in me, because it's out now. I know exactly what you're talking about, I bet. <sighs> Sex in the City. Uh, Andy, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I want to watch it because I heard, you already heard what they did, right? No. What? Oh, I don't know. If I, I, you know what? I should ruin it for you. Like you've ruined No, no. It. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. They kill big. Are you serious? Big is dead. Are you serious? Yeah. You, I want to watch it just because they killed Big right in the beginning, man. Right? Not in the very beginning. but it, Get the uh, fuck out of Are you serious? Serious. I know y'all might think I'm playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all might think I'm playing right now. But I'm 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 telling I'm, this this is I'm this is devastating news to me. I know now I'm definitely not watching this shit. Oh, I'm gonna watch do, it. Do you wait 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 Do you realize <laughs> that um oh now I'm getting emotional. Uh Samantha, my girl that plays Samantha. Yeah. She's not in it. No, she. They, they explain her away. She's on vacation or out of the, out which, of the country. Which, which was explained to me by my baby mother, which I think is horse shit. She's out of the country. Fucking right? cowards. The way to deal with that was was address what the issue was on the show. She had cancer. Kill her off. But to get that's a pussy ass escape. You know how on I, vacation. You know how I would have done it if I was writing it. If they can't get along, if Carrie can't get along, but Carrie has to be in this. They have a fight. They have a fight and they're not talking anymore. Fucking just put. Okay, I'll take that too. Yeah, put put what's actually going on and put it into the fucking story. Because then the, other than cancer, there's at least a chance for return. Yeah. But then, you know, who else is, is not on a show? Well, you wouldn't know because you don't really watch it. But Carrie's best gay friend. Well, he died. I can't remember his. He died. Yeah, in real life. In real life. Yeah. So he's gone. Samantha's gone. They killed my nigga Big. Yeah, Big's dead. He has a heart attack. Oh, this is unacceptable. No, no, seriously. This is unacceptable. Dude, it said, you know how, you know how unacceptable it is? Let me, oh. just, let me tell you how unacceptable it is, not just to you. You want to hear how unacceptable it is? I'm listening, but I'm, I'm hurt. I'm gonna tell you how he dies. You wanna know? You said heart attack. Yeah, but here's how he got the heart attack. He's riding one of those exercise Peloton bikes, right? And he gets off the bike and he has a heart attack and he dies. And you know what happened? Sales of Peloton bikes have gone down. <laughs> they are so mad. Dude, are you fucking kidding? Oh my God. Seriously, I'm, my, I'm serious. Th 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 this is where my man card is coming into question. But I don't give a fuck. Dude, if you really watch that show and from the beginning, and you're a fan and you followed it and you sex in the sex in the city was as macho as it could be for a dude in a soap opera way. Yeah. And I don't know too many dudes that really watch soap operas. You know, that's really a chick thing. That that's that's a middle-aged chick thing. But yo, big Aiden Petrovsky. Oh my god, Steve. Dude, here's if you followed that show. That was my crack, nigga. Dude, here's here's the other thing about that. Though. Oh, um, no. The thing about Big, 
that people don't understand. If you and I, I, you know, I've watched multiple episodes of Sex and the City. I just didn't follow it like you did. Um, Big is the last of the like the Rat Pack kind of guys. That, like the the a man, goddamn it. Yeah, that's that's who his character was. That's he's like one of those dudes, like that kind of guy. And that's what you like. That's what's missing in life. So that's what, <sighs> that's why you gravitate towards that. But for the people who don't understand this, just imagine that uh, Chris. It's Chris North. So that's that's his name. Yes. Yes. If if if, if he on Law and Order went out and ran down a criminal and had a heart attack and died, you would feel that same way. That's how people that like sex in the city feel about what happened to him. Wow. Like, dude, just some quick insight. During the whole show's run, Carrie only had four dudes who she was really serious about. Uh, Berger, Petrovsky, Aiden, and Big. On paper, Aiden was the dude. This, he, he's every woman's fantasy. He wanted to marry Carrie. She didn't want to get married. Why? Because he wasn't big. On paper, Big didn't treat her the right way like Aiden. He 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 wasn't the fucking fairy tale. But he was like you said, the Rat Pack dude. He had money. He had the fucking Lincoln that his driver would drive him around in. Whenever he saw her, he would go, hey, kiddo. Hey, kid. Give a little wink. Smoke cigars. He was what women really want. The nigga who loves you with a little bit of Bitch, get the fuck away from me for a second. Aiden was let snuggle together in a snuggie. Well, he, he, here's, here's how I look at it with what you just said. See, Aiden is every girl's fantasy. That guy that is going to treat you good. You're going to treat him good. It's going to be all like cuddles, right? Mm -hmm. But what do women really want? And this is, this is the truth. The reason Big works and the reason Big is the winner it took me a long time to understand this. Women want a guy that they don't have to take care of. See, Aiden needs to be taken care of. He needs to be fueled. He needs his his inner inner loving self to be loved so that he can be loving. He Big doesn't need that. Big's going to take care of himself. You don't have to take care of Big. You take care of yourself. Big takes care of himself. And then when you get together, we're all taken care of. And Big can take care of you the way that you should, that you should be taken care of. The other one you have to put effort into. Women don't. Women won't admit this. They don't want to put effort into us either. They don't want to put effort in. Big is someone you don't put effort in. Big is going to be fine no matter what. Big is fine. Nigga, I'm big. <laughs> I'm half Tony, half big, nigga. Dude, <laughs> that is the end of our podcast from now on. Steve needs to cut that in. That's the last word. I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck the, uh, you go fuck yourself, convict. I'm big. Nigga, I'm big. <laughs> that's hilarious. Take it any way you want to, but that's that should be the end. Let me tell you, this comedian, this black comedian, for all the niggas who went, Aries don't let black people perform with him. Before Andy, the one black guy who I would have come on the road with me, out of Atlanta, a nigga named Gerard, he had this joke where he would say, ladies, you want a motherfucker that will treat you right and you want a motherfucker that's got a lot of money. I'm here to let you know those are two different motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but that is, that, that's, that's it though. And women, women aren't honest when they, they don't, they want in, in fantasy they want but the that, guy. But I'm telling you, when you follow Sex in the City, Aiden, on, that's what I'm saying, on paper, yeah. it was the fantasy. Yeah. Make a bath water, snuggle in bed, fucking massage her feet. Big wasn't doing all that. No. He would give her just enough loving, but he was still big. But, but you know, when someone runs a bath for you, rubs your feet, makes you dinner, takes care of you that way, you know what, you know what they're entitled to? What that person that does that is entitled to? Uh-huh. What? Equal treatment. That means you have to do nice shit for them. And women but see, are... But, but, but see, but, but see... Women aren't nice. But here's the thing. There are some creatures out there that exist. Yeah. 
I do all that shit. The bath water, the feet, the massage, the love notes. I do that. But I also fuck bitch on the side. Well, then maybe you're- and I don't ever expect a woman to give me that in return because most of them will not. Well, see, that's fair because you're not expecting her to give you the bath water, to rub your feet, to take care of you that way. And you're not expecting Just her to go Just let me have out- a side, bitch. And you're not expecting her to go out and fuck somebody else. So it's fair because you're not expecting them to do the same as you at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dude, that's mm-hmm. the end, man. I'm big. <laughs> ah, damn. All right, this is from, I think, a guy, Rashad Simmons. Uh, Aries of the Dome. Nigga, Aries, the way you came with the shit about bringing a pistol to eat was funny. By the way, you kept hitting that shit. You kept hitting that shit was nothing short of fucking genius. Me burning Andy with 12 Jewish candles, smothering him with a yarmulke. Best of all, Andy was trying to respond, but you wouldn't relent. Comedy won the day. Now, it was Andy's assertion that Kyle was not there for nefarious reasons. And he puts in caps the word wrong. Since Andy loves video, his best buddy, the pussy ass judge, wouldn't let the jury see video of Kyle riding in the car, observing protesters and saying, I wish I had my AR. I would kill those niggers. Also, there's a pic of Kyle posing with the Proud Boys that the judge didn't allow. So Andy, stop it with the Kyle was there to help. He came to kill a nigga, but it ended up being a Jew. Kyle is pussy. He knows he has no hands and he would have been on some black man's bed, bitch, in prison. As for Rosenbaum, uh, he was a piece of shit, too. The state supposed to got a two for one, just like they do us. One dead nigga, one jailed nigga, except in this case, one dead W.S., one jailed W.S. What does he mean when we say W.S., you know? No. Oh, thanks for reading my shit, though. Best podcast on, podcast on the net, and it ain't even close. <clears throat> I, I have nothing. I don't like Kyle. It's not like I like the dude. Well, we know we knew that, but the part of him saying, you know, in the car with him saying, I wish I could kill a nigga. Dude, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit talking people that say shit. This dude didn't go up. Like I said, there's no video of the whole time that he's there. He isn't instigating anything. He isn't causing any problems. But well, one person says in the car, listen, I, I, I don't like him. I, I don't. I think he's being manipulated and used for more bullshit. Uh, if, 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 if it wasn't on legal reasons, I would. When you say when you when you say you think he's being manipulated and used. So are you saying he's a victim in some way? No, no, no. He's allowing himself to be manipulated because he comes. But, you know, this is you get you go to his family, whatever. I don't like the kid, but that doesn't mean that I I look away and say legally I looked at it from a legal position. That's it. And I want everybody to have equal justice, how the law is written. And that what I saw was that he was able he was he was defending himself. That's it. I, I as I tried to get you to watch the video liberal people that were against Kyle who watched what was going on in trial all agreed that it was self-defense by the how the law works. Uh, you can say whatever you want. You can say, he even said it. They were supposed to get a two for one because that's how it works with us. Listen, I don't want it to work that way. I want people who, I want people who haven't done wrong to be able to get off. Now, that doesn't mean they're good people. I don't, I think there's a lot of bad people who do fucked up things, uh, and I hope that they get in trouble for it. But there's also bad people that don't do shit, and uh, let me rephrase it, get caught for doing something that, got to re- word this the right way. I think there's people that should be in jail for things that they did. I don't think we put people in jail for things that they didn't do. For instance, uh, I, you know, you said this before, This and this is where it, it, it's wrong, very wrong. Uh, O.J. Simpson got off. We brought that up. I'm not, I've said that he's innocent. I know he was innocent because he was found innocent in a court of law. So as far as I'm concerned, he was innocent. But what did they do? When they had the opportunity to get him, they put him in jail uh, for some sen- for a sentence that should have been six months, time served. What did they give him? Like 20 years? When he yeah. was... Yeah. That's not the way justice... I want justice to work. But... But you understand why it worked that way? Yeah. Because he killed, because the belief is that he killed a white woman. That's why. That nigga that. got away with murder. Of, of a white woman, not of murder. It's very important that we include that. 
He didn't get away with, if he would have killed another black person, it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. It, it, probably not at all. So that's why I'm saying it's because he But the fact that he got one. away with murder of two white people. Yeah, I understand that. But that right. is not what I want to happen. That should have never gone. That should have been overturned. And that's the direction I, I believe we're moving in. But you got to keep that that way. Uh, I have a case where uh, after the- if, joy we, if you ever make a documentary about how you feel about all of this racially, it should be, uh, your production company should be called Produced by Should Productions. Well, no, because uh, it should be produced by I Have a Dream because I guess I'm having the same dream, uh, but it's only a dream because it isn't happening in reality. But I do see that it is It was all a dream. I just read so Pepper the Bitter Limousine. I'm sorry, go ahead. Word Up Magazine. Uh, oh, excuse Woo! Sorry. Well, I remember something. Um, <laughs> the, w the way that it's laid out, the law should, the law should come... I, I I don't know how we could do this any differently. I don't think that you should get to see the people <laughs> that are on trial because whatever happens, or it should be a, a trial of your peers. This is ridiculous that a black person goes on trial and he has an all white jury. If you, you want know something that I think you're on to something, dude. Seriously, they should do trials where you don't see the people. Yeah, like like you just hear them. You hear the cases. They break down what it is. But you never know what race they are. Uh, that would be what, way more uh, fair, I think, fair, because whatever. Li listen, our, our legal system is, is fucked up and as many problems as it has. It's still considered one of the best systems. The problem is the people who are in charge of the system. And when you leave it up to the, gen the general public, I mean, that great joke is like, how do I want to be tried by someone who couldn't get out of jury duty? I mean, that's the person that... The, per the person that couldn't get out of jury duty. So that's obviously a person who doesn't have very, who hasn't figured out how to get out of shit. I, I, I it, it's the way that justice is handed down by whom it's handed down from. That's the problem. I, there, how do you find someone that really is a, a, a person that can look at the law and remove everything that they saw, the people and whatever your beliefs are, however you were raised, just looking at the law. This, but this, do you think? But, but do you think that if if you couldn't see the people, or based on the type of crime, you could make a pretty f fair assessment of what the people are? This motherfucker uh, stabbed three people in the neck with chicken bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even better though. Here's here's what would be really funny about it. So like, <laughs> and this is where this is this is where we go into all of our stereotyping. But funny. Uh, so let's say that just to make sure that there was even no voice content. It would be read by a computer sounding voice. So do that same thing, but with a computer sounding voice and see. Like that voice that talks like this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, <clears throat> three people were killed by being stabbed in the neck with a fried chicken bone. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess some, some things may like slip in. So you, you uh, uh, of uh, a stereotyping, but Right. Yeah. I, I, I again, and, and I understand. This is what I don't think that he, I don't know if he understood. I understood the point. I understood why people were angry. But anger and not liking somebody isn't how you're supposed to convict. And when people say things like "he shouldn't have been there," that's the same excuse that white racists well, used before in the past of where a black person was. So you can't go back to do. We want to go forward. And that was my whole point. And I think there is changes being made. One of the, and I don't have the case in front of me, but I can have it for the next podcast. Uh, when the George Floyd protests were going on, there was a dude who shot at the police, not knowing it was police because it was an unmarked car, but he shot at the police, realized it was the police, surrendered. Uh, and uh, he got off on self-defense. And the cops who actually, uh, they, they actually beat him because he was firing at their car and Let's just say the cops can get a little uh, worked up. None of them got hit. None of them got killed. So it's not the same case. But he got off for self-defense and those cops were fired. So we're moving in the right direction. Is it fast enough? No. <laughs> but I, that's, it has to, this is the way that it works. If, you, if you're, An entire school was shot up and the killer's first words before his spree was, mom, suck my cock. Dad, I hate your guts. Yeah, that's the that's the one. Uh, can you guess the race? <laughs> yeah, see, you can figure it out pretty much that way. Right. Uh, right. But yeah, so, you know, I, I can appreciate the irritation. I understood it. 
And I said that I understood it, but watch what I watch what I've given and watch what I've given out, and you'll see that people who, you know, uh, we just watched it recently. You commented on it. Um, the dude who's on the uh, the Young Turks, and he said the yeah. thing about calling black men savages. The white dude who went in off. Okay. Do you know what the guy I'm talking about? Mm, I can't remember his name, but he's he's one of the Young Turks. He does the the news thing. And he went off on how never. Like, oh, I saw that. Yes. Okay. He begrudgingly, angrily understood the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and what, what happened. <laughs> but watching him, if you watch that video I sent you, you'll see him in there angrily going, okay, but angrily. He wanted, he wanted Kyle done too. I get it. I get why you would want that tap, why you'd want him to be taken down for that. Right. But it's the law. The law has there worked. was a mass car accident killing 27 people with a major car, car pile up and the drivers responsible after they caused the accident was long live Jet Li and Jackie Chan. Can you guess the race? <laughs> Uh, I think there. I think we have to have legal reviews though after trials, and there should see if there's any race or bias in this, especially in the uh, in the decision of uh, by the judge, especially when the judge has the sole uh, has the sole responsibility of the punishment, because this is where uh, a, a lot of this these problems come in. But we have to figure something out. But I, like I said, I feel like I've seen cases where it seems like it's progressing the right way. I don't want to go backwards if it's progressing the right way, but we still need to figure out a way to improve the system. There needs to be an improvement. There needs to be an oversight uh, on each trial. Here, here. Okay, so we're done. All right. Uh, it's all about P. Uh, number one movie and number one show recommendation. Hey, double A, I'm going to keep this quick. Go check out the movie Black Box. It's on Amazon Prime. My other recommendation is a show called Them. It is also on Amazon Prime. The show Them will have you and Andy talking. From what I've heard, a lot of white people gave it bad reviews because of its theme. Enjoy. And I think I sent Andy a text saying, someone sent a recommendation. Oh, oh, D.L. Hewley posted about a white woman, a black woman who looks white. And the post was about how her neighbors would say racist shit to her about black people because they assumed she was white. Uh, one of the neighbors said, how could you have that uh, Black Lives Matter sign yep, in your it. window? Right. Uh, as much as they kill each other. So there's a show on Netflix, I think, called Passing. And I think it's about black people who look white, who uh, other white people think they're white. So to the same you know, theme... Uh, they pass as white, but they're black and they like, you know, can infiltrate the enemy's camp and figure out what's really going on. Well, I talked about that a little bit at very early in our podcast is that I was, uh, I, I grew up in my mom's, I mean, for the most part, until my mom got remarried, I grew up right in my grandmother's house. It's a Mexican household. But when we moved away, I got to hear what everybody said about Mexicans, about blacks, about every, every uh, Jews, because everybody just thought I was the, uh, a white kid. So I, I, that was what formed its impression on me early in life, that I knew that these people weren't who they projected themselves to be. So there's, not, mm -hmm. there, there's never been any... Uh, like I, I'm never surprised. But also, on the other hand, like Jews didn't... Jews, like I said, saw me as Mexicans. Mexicans saw me as Jews. So it, I, I don't, I don't have a homeland. So I don't trust anybody. Uh, what was the other <coughs> movie? Them, and what was the other one? Pat. Oh, that that person said. Yeah. Black box. Yeah. I think I seen that one. Dude, somebody. I don't have the email, but uh, it was really short. They just basically told me. Watch this show called Yellow Jackets. Yeah, I saw that last night. I saw a lot about it. I've heard it's been, it's great. But you haven't seen it though, no. right? No. From the previews, it gave me, an, and I could be completely off, an Ozark-like feel. I am desperately wanting to see another show like Ozark. I, and, and Yellow Jackets looks like it might be it. 
No, I'm going to check it out because we saw it. I saw a preview last night, but I was watching the movies for the yesterday's podcast. So I didn't, okay. I didn't check it out, but I'm, I want to. <coughs> no, I didn't see Black right. Box. I didn't see the Black Box either. So those are two movies worth looking at. All right. This is from Wolverine Weapon X, Kiki's son. What up, ANA? Hope all is well. My top 10 military movies in no particular order. Uh, and I know, Andy, you've seen a lot of these, but if there's, if, I'm going to ask you if you've seen these two. Uh, Lone Survivor with Mark Wahlberg. Yes, I saw that one. All right. 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. I did not see that one. I, w- I started to and I didn't. Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis. I don't think I saw that one. Full, A Few, a few Good Men, of uh, course. Yeah, yeah. Full Metal Jacket, of yes. course. Act of Valor. I think I saw Act of Valor. Who's in it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to look it up, but I think I saw that one. That one sounds... Go on. <sighs> American Sniper with Bradley Cooper. Yes, I saw that. That was good. Uh, and Glorious Bastards. Isn't that a comedy? No, um, it's it's a remake, and Quentin Tarantino did that, directed that one. With uh, If it's the one... There's the original, and then there's the one that was recent with Brad Pitt. Uh, it's not a comedy. So that's a Quentin Tarantino movie? Yeah. It's a direct... Does he say... Is the word nigga in it? Um... I know Nazis in it because uh, I, I don't I, I don't think so, but uh, it could be. But uh, I just know that uh, Brad Pitt says Nazi, how he says it, Nazis or something. The Nazis. Nazis, yeah. He says yeah, a movie. Quentin Tarantino movie without the word niggas like spaghetti without red sauce. Uh, <laughs> Glorious Bastards. Oh, I just said that one. Red Tails with Terrence Howard and Cuba Gooden Jr. <sighs> I think I saw that one. I'm pretty sure I saw that one. You're not sure if you saw that movie, man. You ain't see that movie, man. I haven't seen Act of Valor. I just looked it up. Oh. Make sure you see Red Tails, man. Y- 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 that's, Terrence Howard sounds like that in every movie. You know what it is, man. <laughs> Nigga sounds cold and scared. <laughs> Could you turn the heat on? It's cold in him, man. I told you. He's, I don't do the best Terrence Howard, but for no, those. That- he always sounds like he's about ready. To, he either just woke up or about ready to go to sleep to me. That's how he always sounds. You said he sounds sleepy. Yeah. I don't get sleepy. I, have you ever heard, seen those guys that are about ready? Like, <laughs> have you ever seen a movie where someone's, I don't want, I'm describing him in such a shitty way. Those guys that are like on drugs and they're about ready to nod off. Yeah. They have that kind of tone with it's, it's a, a man. And then they're mm. out. All right. Uh, last but not least, saving Private Ryan. Of course. Of course. Uh, for me, 13 Hours is my favorite. If you haven't seen it, catch it. Check it out. P.S. I want to know what Andy thinks of that picture I sent you on Instagram. I attached it with the email. Be good, fellas. Yeah, I, I, I sent that out as a post. Uh, I'll, I'll send it to Andy and see what he thinks. What? It's, it's, it, it, it was... It, it was uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, oh yeah, I Dennis Rodman, Shaq, and I forget who the fifth person was I, versus you yeah, know you yeah, saw but, that right yeah but it's the it's it's uh, Phil Jackson's team versus uh, Pat Riley's team you know I, who I, was uh, Magic Kareem, uh, Chris Bosh, LeBron James, and D Wade. You got to get. Uh, Bosch out of there. Give uh, give me one of Riley's Knicks players. Uh, nah, you can't do that, yo. Yeah, because it's Riley's the... players. Nah, 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 nah. I know, but I know, but I hate when people do that. Stick with the script. You can't go but replace. Fuck that. Stick with the script. Because I think it's a shitty. It, it's not a fair one. Well, that's Pat's pick. That's Pat's Riley's pick. Yeah, it's not his pick. That's just the one. Yeah, that... it is. It said Riley's pick. Oh, it's Ed Riley's pick? Yes. Okay. It's Phil's pick versus Riley's pick. And if we're going to play that game, a lot of people were going replace Bosch with Zoe, uh, Zoe, Will, Zoe, Will Zoe Williams. Fucking Alonzo Mourning. Yeah. Yeah, you know the nigga whooped your ass when you have feared flashbacks and conversation. Um, You know, it's just hard for me because I don't see, I can't put Kobe and Michael on the same team? Yeah, and not to mention Shaq. Shaq is, I know you think Shaq is the number one. You can't have Shaq down the stretch. He can't make his free throws. I know, but the damage between Kobe, Michael, and Shaq 
will be so devastating. Yeah, is but, the game really coming down to free throws? But Shaq needs the ball, and the Shaq needs the ball. He needs points. Uh, <sighs> Michael's going to get his points. Kobe wants his points. How do you make that balance? Everybody, all both those those two both have to have the ball. Nigga, that score is ten thousand to twenty eight. Dude, if you give me listen, I, I'm I, if you gave me LeBron, and and I have I, I have Magic Johnson and Kareem, and then you but, got but but do you, but do you really think do you really think Kareem dominates Shaq uh, with that girth and that power and and that position in the paint? Two different games, so I, I don't know. Well, then you that's when you have that's when Bosch can come in and 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 play too in, in the center position. Dude, I love an open court when they have that moment in between commercials and they cut to like, you know, the B footage. And Shaq goes, Yo, I think I gotta, I think I gotta took Kareem. I think I gotta I, think I gotta took him. And Isaiah Thomas goes, Shaq, you, you know I love you. And the moment he said, Shaq, you know I love you, Shaq starts dying. He goes, You know I love you. But what Kareem was doing in the mid 80s. He to get you the business. See, and, and, <laughs> and I love Kareem and, and, and you have magic. And then if you could say, if you could just look at, at LeBron and say, I don't give a fuck about your passing. I don't want you to pass. The, you get the ball. Just shoot, score. Yeah. And magic's taking care of the passing. Just fucking score. Who was that? Who was the fifth person on that Phil Jackson pick? Michael Kobe, Rodman, Rodman and Shaq. Who was the other one? Scotty. Oh, Scotty. Yo, you don't think Scotty Pippen slows LeBron down? It's a different body type, man. Yeah, but Scotty's defense. I, I get that, but then you have Wade that come the, the pass from but but LeBron, LeBron can get doubled and still get the pass off then if he doesn't if if, if Scotty's giving him the business. Well, listen, man, technically, you got you got uh three motherfuckers you could double team. That, and you'll pay for it either either squad. You can't double team nobody. If you double down on Mike, you're leaving over, over open Scotty and most importantly, fucking Kobe and Shaq. If you double down on LeBron, you leaving open Magic Green. It, yeah, I, I think it's tough. I just don't. I can't see Kobe and and and, and Michael playing together, and then having Shaq. Is your center, and at the end of the game, play hack a shack. Now you don't have Shaq. Right. So I, I I take Riley's team. All right. But it's hard for me to do that because I do believe in the end. If the game's close, if the game is close at the end, if it's a shot, if we're talking about a one point, right. two points, and I got Kobe and Michael, and I don't I, the I don't have that mentality anywhere in Riley's team. That's when it's the problem. Magic had that mentality. He was just a passer, though. He, but he didn't, he, yeah. And he could play every position. Yeah, I get that he had the mentality, but I don't think he had the Michael and the, uh, I say if you play the replace game, either replace Bosch with Alonzo Mourning or more importantly, Larry Bird. Yeah, but he didn't coach Larry Bird. It had to be oh, somebody's coach. Why. That's why. That's An why. Anthony Mason. Oh, please. Dude, Hell no. Then you have a body to put on Shaq. Oh, that booger nigga. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's get the female fans back. Uh, Devin Harris, uh, first time writer. What up, Aries and Andy? I'm a long time listener, but first time writer. And I have to say, I can't wait to Wednesday and Thursday. Y'all make my work day. But to make this short and sweet, this was the, I, I said yellow jackets. This is what it is. He, this is the email I was talking about. But to make this short and sweet, I listened to y'all show and all the shows you and Andy talk about and haven't heard you say nothing about Yellowstone. This is the best show outright, outright, man. Out, this is the best show outright, man. When did you, you become Muhammad right Ali? Now. Huh? When did you become Muhammad Ali? This is the best show outright, man. <laughs> this is the best show outright, man. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, out right now. $10 a lot of you, first time writer. Um, this is the best show I've watched. Watch, watch for me, but I would love for y'all to watch it and give y'all a review. Thanks for reading my email, Pook D. Yeah, dude, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and, and check this show out because it does look good. And Juliet Lewis is in this. 
Um, that nigga raped me, daddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was, dude, I was walking through my kitchen yesterday. Uh, and I was doing my Muhammad Ali. Again, if they made a movie where Muhammad Ali was old and fat when he was in his down, like on a down, I would have been perfect. Cause I just, you know, I'm the greatest. I fought all the way fighters. I fought Joe Listens, Joe Fraser. I heard a Cuba Shadows of Islands. I fall all the way fighters in the ring. I look good. I'm still pretty. I've been knocked down, but I've never been knocked out. I fought Joe Fraser three times. I fought Kenny North Sunderland and Ernest Shavers. And I'm still the greatest. Mm. It's pretty yeah. accurate, no? No, it's good. And you got the face. You do the face. You got the... Yeah, you know, when you bite over... that bottom lip and those eyes open, those so slightly. But when the words are slurred and say Joe Fraser and Sons of Islands. Yeah. How, did, how did you like Billy Crystal's Muhammad Ali? I thought it was cartoonish. I thought it was a white guy trying to do a black guy, and it felt that way. Okay. I, I, I got it, but it felt like a white guy trying to do a black guy. For that time, genius. Now corny. Okay. No, I, I was just wondering how you felt about it, because... Yeah. Because, because you, you know, you've said it before. There's, everybody, there's people that have somebody, and they get credit for doing that person. And, yeah. that, and that was Billy Crystal's person. At that time, At that yes. time, yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, this is short and sweet, so fuck it. Angel F. Faro, episode 317, Top War Movies. Check out Enemy at the Gates. It's top 10 for sure, starring Jude Law and Ed Harris. I think you I saw that one, yeah. I think I saw that one. Dude, I, I bet you me and Andy could do it just like with the Christmas movies. We could do a good thing on top 10 war movies. But again, I just, war movies to me are like uh, chicken drumettes, chicken wings that are broken. I, I just, once I see bone out the skin, once I see blood and too much gore and a brain hanging out of a nigga's head, yeah, I'm good. Dude, I can't eat wings without thinking about you, dude. Every time I eat wings now, I was, <laughs> I was at uh, um, the olive tree, the olive tree, the the one above right. the the comedy cellar, right? And they have great wings. And I went over there, and sitting on the very top of the basket was that. Oh, that, was it with the bone sticking out? And I just started laughing because ah. I know I know you're done. You can't even eat the wings now. You know what's crazy, dude? And there's nothing like, and not, and, and not every place, like wings is one of those things, it ain't easy to do. There are some places that make phenomenal wings. Andy, there are certain improvs you and I do. Uh, it's not an improv, but I'm telling you, Levity, Nyack, yo, when the wings are right, wings are, 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 are crack on bones, nigga. Crack meat on a bone. But I'm telling you, like the one that's, that really creeps me out is when you can't even see the wing, the bone broken, piercing through the skin. But when you pick it up, you know it's broken because the skin is all one piece. <laughs> but you can see where how it's bending. Bent. It's broke on the inside. Andy, I swear to God, nigga, I'll flip the table. <laughs> dude, I, 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 uh, dude, this is our, our next show. It, we should just do seriously. We've done this together enough on the road that we could start naming what food to eat at these fucking comedy clubs. Like the good. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what, a, you know what, a, what, a, what, a, what a broken wing through the skin does to me. I look and sound exactly like Schwarzenegger and total recall when the Mars helmet shield, the glass broke. <laughs> Guys, I know that w w you think sometimes it's just, for fun. Jokes. On the podcast. Um, when we're out, and if he gets a fucked, he won't look at it. He'll just go, he'll turn his head and he'll hold up the plate towards me. And he go, uh, we, can, can you, can you get that out of, can you get that out of my basket? Can you get that out of my box? Can you, whatever it is, that, can you take that off the plate? He can't even look at it, you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's, I'm not making fun dude, of it. The moment I sense it. I'm telling you, I turn my head like a father who knows that his baby that's in his arms took a shit. He's not lying. It fucking oh. creeps him out. Uh, you'll like this one. Uh, LeBron ship vans. And I got to issue a statewide apology. I did not know. Andy is right. Laugh out loud. Niggas do wear vans, my man. I have a few pairs of vans. 
I had a few pairs of Vans in my day, and I'm a nigga for show. And if that's not good enough, my brother and cousin both wear Vans, and they from Roland 60s Crip. Uh, you just stuck in New York, fam. Laugh out loud. Read my shit, nigga. I ain't, you ain't read my email, and you ain't read my last three emails. Well, now that I know your cousins is in the 60 Roland Crips, I will read every email you send me while wearing Vans, nigga. <laughs> Um, and then somebody else told me, they was like, yo, Nas wore Vans, certain rappers wore Vans. Yo, I apologize, man, because I really thought Vans was some, you know, everybody else but niggas. Well, it started off as, a, it's a surf, it's a surf line. Well, well, even more reason why I would think niggas don't wear but it. But it's also, like, it's a fa- it had fashion, and it was, uh, honestly, the reason kids, especially kids, young kids wore Vans were the... Vans had style, but they weren't expensive. They weren't, you didn't spend 120. You spent like at the time when, when uh, Jordans were 120, you could get the Vans for 40 bucks, $60. Right. And it had, it had style to it. It looked good. Um, but Vans, Vans have really changed their marketing. Every, everything about Vans is different now. And, and Vans are cool. Mm. All right. God damn. I just, you know, and you know, look, I will admit I am stuck a little bit. Uh, in my ways, you know, uh, I eventually want to get back to wearing sneakers. And when I do, it ain't going to be colorful, loud sneakers. I'm back to Air Force Ones, which is another New York shoe staple. Dude, but the new Air Force Ones, uh, yeah, you got to see the new looks, man. The Air Force Ones, there's some, yeah, they have the, the very standard, the white one, the black one. Yeah, standard. But when you see right. the new looks, the new looks are nice. Really? Yeah, I like Air Force Ones. I just have kind of flat. The reason I'm not wearing Vans as much, but the ones I do wear are the Comfy Cush or the Pros because I have a, I, I have an arch issue because I'm an old man. So I can't mm. wear the, the flat shoes as well as I, as I used to be able to. So, um, and Nike doesn't have a, a real good arch. So whatever. You gotta, you, Damn, that's, that's a lot of old man talk. It is. But, talking about your arches, nigga. Dude, but the Adidas, the, uh, the Adidas superstars, nice arch. I remember Patrice, when he was on Open Anthony, he was talking about the difference in what white men and black men look for in sneakers. He was like, white guys actually give a fuck about and ask questions about, yo, on the new Asics with the gel, will that help the arch on my foot when I niggas buy sneakers to match their hat? Yeah, but it's also because he wasn't old enough yet. The older you get, the more syllables in your issues. Hmm. The more syllables in your issues. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something, y'all. Every now and then, Andy shoot out nuggets, yo. (laughs) This nigga shits out verbal nuggets. There was something else you said. I can't remember now, but I think it was yesterday's episode. But you said something that was a verbal fucking nugget. I liked it, man. Well, if I could remember shit, maybe I'll tell you what they are. Well, all right. I'll tell it to you when I steal it. Okay. You can have it because uh, it's already gone. There it is. TJ Richardson. Yeah. Uh, what up, ANA? I enjoyed the show in Biloxi. Pretty much what I expected. Had a fucking blast. I know how you feel about the Southern region, but you have a lot of fans down here. What? In Mississippi. Not the Mississippi. Uh, when, you ke- when you kept it Parker on the front row, you had my section dying. LOL. Being in a moist era, it's nice to hear real raw funny. You're definitely in my top five dead or alive. Appreciate that, TJ. You should see if uh, that uh, bottle cap opener will ever come to your shows in Mississippi. Let me tell you something. That is the one time in my act, or that's the one time where I become Michael Winslow. That's the one great sound effect <laughs> I have. It's the opening of a beer bottle, a.k.a. a Miami bitch's teeth. A Mississippi bitch's teeth. Mississippi, Mississippi uh, by way of... Is that Raleigh? Yeah, by way of Raleigh. Was it Raleigh? Yeah. That was a Mississippi. Uh, it was actually... Heineken. Let me get two Heinekens. Uh, what's a black Mississippi woman name? Uh, M- M- Mudinha. Mudinha, like mud. Hey, Mudinha. <laughs> Coping these Heineken bottles. What do you want me to do? Get on your knees. <laughs> It was really Carrie, but it's it's the Raleigh Improv that she was at. She's, oh, okay. That's the one. How are, where, where are we at on time? Uh, we're there. We're past it. 
Oh, are we? How, by how much? Uh, 10 minutes, 11 minutes. All right, let me read this last one. Let me hit the Vans thing again. <sighs> From Tommy Parsons, Vans in the Hood. Good morning on the subject on the subject of brothers not wearing Vans. Let's start with Nas. He wears them and sends them to other brothers. I see them in the hood all the time because they're affordable. And maybe it's a Cali thing. Love the show. Long time listener. Second time emailer. $10. Holla. Tom P. Yeah. So, Tom, apparently um, I'm wrong, dude. A lot of people used to wear those uh, way back in like the 80s. Those Converse. The old school Converse. Dude, I never understood or could get into Converse, dude. Well, they're uncomfortable. It's a cloth shoe. And it's uncomfortable. But the Vans... Is it really? Yeah, and the Vans were the same price and more comfortable. That's right. that's really what was part of it. And they and, and Vans came in colors, like like the like the Converse. But the Converse, man, just really hard on the feet. Yeah, and I never... That look was... I don't know. It made your foot look long and skinny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me read it. Cause this is from Kosh. And I, I, please let me get to one more. Cause you know, I just feel like, you know, yeah, we have to, this nigga be on suicide watch. If we, if we don't, if we go too long, uh, one day we ain't gonna hear no more. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It'll just be the last bubble. You just hear the, right. the water draining out of the tub. Oh God. See this. Wouldn't it be great? It almost reminds me of those, uh, I don't know if it's Geico commercials or one of those commercials, those weird commercials where if when you need a sound effect, every time we do, we cut to Michael Winslow. <laughs> and it's just him doing the sound effects. Whoosh. All right. Uh, yes. Kolsch K. Or, or maybe pitch a Kolsch taking a bath in the toilet. And then you hear the flush. All right. Uh, platonic Kolsch what up, Steinmaster 1000 and Aries the Animal Steel? I like that. That one I like. I like that a lot. That was very Mean Gene Oakland WWF. Mean Gene Oakland here with Steinmaster 1000 and Aries the Animal Steel. Who you know, Mean Gene? <laughs> it's going to be playtime. <laughs> when I see the Steinmaster, it's going to be good. Uh, is it possible for men and women to strictly be platonic? No. Uh, well, there's that. Uh, I can already hear this being addressed in my head by the late, great Patrice O'Neill discussing it on the Black Phillips show. I'm pretty sure they say it's not possible because of nature. We men are seen as procreators, the hunter gatherer mentality. In my opinion, I think it's 50-50 case by case. Of course, in a professional atmosphere or in a social, societal, societal, societal construct, I would think it would lean towards platonic. As comedians, how would y'all put your spin on this topic? I can already imagine all the jokes. Love and peace, my patinous. So what does platonic mean? Just one person? No, platonic is uh, friend with, without any. Uh, oh, just friends. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't be around uh, linguine with a white wine sauce with clam juice and shrimp, uh, jumbo prawns and scallops, and not eat. And sometimes that's exactly what pussy is. It's linguine with white wine sauce and giant prawns and scallops. With a Chianti, I, I think I think women can do it better than men, but I, I because I've seen it, situations where you are friends long enough that when that 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 part can kind of be put aside. You know what I mean? The sex, the sex part, the the attraction part. But let me not let me take that back. The sex part, the attraction part. I don't know. There's always. I think as a man, you always have that. There's something there. You you see something there. It's called an erection. Yeah. Well, listen to the ladies out there. I know you already know this, but you're going to pretend like it isn't. If you if you if you become part of a, a dude's existence, there's no way that you haven't made 
Well, unless you're Aries, because Aries doesn't take himself out. Uh, but there's no way you're not in the in, in the show. And, and if you're not in the show, you should be offended because <laughs> everyone is in the show. <laughs> Yeah, I, that to me just feels like, what does that mean? So you're an attractive woman. As friends, we're going to go to the movies and sit next to each other and have a good time in the dark. We're going to go out to eat. We're going to go Dutch. We're going to eat. We're going to part ways. You're going to call me. We're going to tell each other stories. Like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, I think it can happen when, like, it, like, if you knew someone for a long time, if they were dating someone else, you were dating someone else, and you were committed to those relationships and you became friends and you did that for, let's say, years. There's a possibility that could continue that way. No woman I'm with can have a male friend. I, I, I'm, I'm very, I play by uh, the Mahujadeen lo- laws and the, and the, and the, uh, the, the Quran and then the terrorist yeah. behavior. I don't, you know. The problem My is- My woman is not allowed. You don't ever go. No, stop, stop. You, you, sit down, sit down. Shut up. The problem is most women who have men friends, that's who they hang out with. It's just the men. They don't have women friends. Get some fucking women friends. mm -mm, mm -mm. There's no reason for it. There's just no reason for it. You know, fuck that. I love it too much, nigga, to be around it and not play in it. Yeah, yeah, I I, I just think is anything, um, it's dangerous. I, I, nigga, being with being friends with a woman and not fucking is like going to the pool and not getting in the water. But come on, man. What are we doing here then? What are we doing? There's water here. Let me show you my cannonball, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> some some I, I know that it does work for some people, but dude, there's just too many of those conflicting emotions. That you just need one night of a bad night for one of you and too many drinks. I'm telling for the other you, one. that's how, and that's how it happens. Yeah. A bad night and some tequila, and then it's an apology to your real boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, my panties was over my head as my, he- as my heels touched the ceiling because what? Get the fuck out of here. So right. it can happen, uh, but also you can. Um, you can tight you can tightrope walk. You can walk a thousand times on a tightrope, but you're gonna fall eventually. I'm telling you, we were friends, kid. It was a wicked friendship. Next thing you know, a couple of fucking things of tequila. And the fucking pussy was to die for. It was at market price. It was at market price. <laughs> fucking, it smells different when it's at market. When you get it from the market. Um, all right. Uh, any announcements before we cut to yeah just to say I, you know I'm only going to really throw out the uh, uh, Miami the 29th through the 2nd we're in Miami Florida to do the uh, New Year's festivities so uh, I'm sorry the 30th through the 2nd Miami improv come on out let's uh, let's ring in this new year let's, let's make this new year uh, uh, different than the last fucking <laughs> This I, I'm just done. I'm done. COVID. I'm done. Locked up. Uh, I'm done with. I, I and I know that we're done. I, I know that like it's not the Boy. same as it was before. I just want to be able to get on a plane without a mask on. I want to be able to do some life shit without worrying that I'm gonna uh, uh, that someone's breathing behind me. Uh, right. I'm just ready for for something different. I know it's not gonna happen tomorrow but i'm just ready for this new year let's ring this fucking bitch in oh i like that see i mean put your dick on the table nigga. all right um this is from show esco song is called give it up instagram is s h o underscore uh e s k o um i think in the instagram it's capital o S H capital O underscore E S K capital O. Uh, Facebook is S H O E S K O. The song is called Give It Up uh, from Show Esco. Love you guys. I'm big, nigga. <laughs> Spears. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, 
Well, it was hosted by Aries Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer Big Papa Robert Kelly and Matt 